We have known from the very beginning of the national lockdowns that it was going to have an effect on employment, and it certainly has, with uh, at one point something like 40 million Americans going on unemployment in a very short period of time, and we get that many of those people are still without work. But I want to focus today on who and where the damage is being done, because it's not everybody, and it's not everywhere, and it's certainly not equal. So, an economics professor at the University of Chicago found that workers in the lowest quintile of income have experienced three times as many job losses as workers in the highest quintile. That's a shocker for longtime viewers of the show. But that's just looking through the lens of income alone. He also says that when you consider race, age, and gender, that could push the differences even further. And so, let's take a look at a particular city. So, this is unemployment rates for different neighborhoods in New York City before and after the pandemic. And you can see that overall, there's a massive rise in unemployment. But you'll notice that the rise isn't nearly as bad in basically like the heart of Manhattan. It's worse, but when you look at some of the other boroughs, it is devastating. Some of those have gone beyond the dark purple color to literal black, the maximum rating for growth in unemployment uh, in that area. And so, Gary, I guess we're, I mean, look, we're not shocked to find out that, you know, this is not being evenly distributed, but I don't know if there's enough consideration in like the ongoing negotiations over what the aid is going to look like from the Senate, that this is not just a thing of, oh, corporations are kind of hurting. This is that certain communities, certain income demographics have been absolutely devastated by this thing. Think about people who are servers, right? Think about... Uh bartenders, uh, people who uh, make make the majority of their money on tips, right, that are out of work for months. And think about photographers. Who's getting married, right? Um, who's who's taking uh, pictures in, in these? And very few people are. Some people are, are figuring out how to be uh, more active in this climate, right? But there are entire uh, groups of people. If you work in the hospitality industry in any capacity, um, there have been no big gatherings for caterers in, 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 in who some restaurant owners, they uh, subsidize the, the money that they don't make uh, through their, their door-to-door business through catering, right? Well, who's having a gathering of 250 people in America right now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, who's having the Democratic National Convention, the Republican National Convention, they would normally be uh, up to take over city loading into hotels uh people going into all of these places and they understand this they just know that hey we'll take care of the people because those are the people we know and you know the poor people they'll be all right you know and if they're not okay they're not our voters anyway yeah yeah exactly like um you know like obviously restaurants uh were shut down some opened back up and then in a lot of parts of the country they're shutting down again bars the same when i think about like for instance uh, so normally at this time of the year, there's this convention that, that I go to in Indianapolis. And I've talked to people in the area. It brings in like countless millions of dollars. And that pays for jobs, both for the convention, but also all the restaurants and bars and hotels and all of that around there. That's who's being hurt. And, you know, we were talking about New York. I have a little bit more data on there. You can even breaking it down to the different um, the different boroughs uh, throughout June. Researchers found that most neighborhoods in the Bronx had unemployment rates above 20%, while most neighborhoods south of 95th Street in Manhattan had rates less than half that. And they said that for comparison, it's like as if the Bronx was experiencing the Great Depression, while the Upper East Side modest drops in employment. Like, kind of a bad time, but not that devastating. And the thing is, it's not just New York. You can see it. Um, I'm going to show you a picture here of Chicago. Absolutely devastating um, certain areas. Um, we got the same thing if I jump ahead to L.A., where I'm broadcasting from. You know, it's bad everywhere, but certain areas are being hit by far the worst. And, you know, if you know the, the geography of L.A., you can see it mapped out right there. I understand the picture is very small. I apologize for that, everybody. But, yeah. And, um, and then to see in D.C., maybe we'll have a deal by Friday. You know, the unemployment benefits just lapsed and it'll take weeks for them to come back, even if we get a deal. But, you know, maybe we'll come up with something like the lack of urgency is such an insult just being spat upon um, by our government who they're all still pulling a salary. They're not about to be evicted. Everyone they know is weathering this thing just fine. It's insult to injury in this time. 
You know, ask the mayor of Austin if losing South by South this South by Southwest this year um, hurt his city, yeah. or his, his or her city, right? Um, ask people who have had to cancel, ask New Orleans, right? And Mayor Kentrell um, and all of the festivals that had to be canceled in New Orleans, Jazz Fest, uh, which brings in millions of dollars a year to the city of New Orleans. Ask them um, how the people who uh, were street vendors fared as a result of this. And, you know, it showed American. Um, and I just hope that voters on election day don't just remember Donald Trump's name needs not to be clear. But I think that they need to remember that they're Republican senators who are down there toying. And let's be clear, that's our money. Mm -hmm. Okay? We pay taxes. This is not a gift to American citizens. This is saying to American citizens, there's something going on beyond your control. Let us give you some of your money back so that you can survive through this encounter. And it doesn't matter if the American in the citizen is 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 uh, not paying as much in uh, income taxes because everybody is paying sales taxes, right? And and those sales taxes on the local level and the state level keep the economies going. And without those dollars moving through our economy, you're gonna you think things are bad now. Mm -hmm. They're gonna get worse. And and what we know as black people in America is if white America catches a common cold, we catch pneumonia. Yeah. Okay. And and in this case, coronavirus unto death. Yeah. Yeah. The idea that, you know, when you have completely unequal distribution of the economic damage at the same time that from the very beginning, coronavirus has been doing the exact same thing. Um, when when I look out and, and I, you know, because I, I, you know, I know. One of my favorite people in the entire world who's very close by uh, lost her job uh, because of this. Um, I just lost a family member uh, just a few, few days ago to coronavirus uh, in Florida. Like there's so much pain and so much anxiety Sorry. and fear. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, and fear for the future. And then to listen to D.C. and people like Steve Mnuchin, the only fear they have is that some people might temporarily make a little bit more money on unemployment than they were when they were being um, completely abused um, by their job and not being paid enough. The fact that that's the only thing that gets them mad during this pandemic, I just, I, I can't believe that we're governed by these people who so fundamentally misunderstand and disrespect the people that they're supposed to be serving. It's got to change. And, you know, I know that nothing that's going to happen in November is going to solve all of it. But, but I do hope that we can move um, a little bit in the right direction. I agree. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.